Ah. Hey, Jim, how are you? Pretty good, Gail, how are you? I'm good. And there's Steve in his beard. <laughs> <clears throat> Don't let me forget to say that your piece to the DTC is a masterpiece. It's, it's a beauty. I, I, uh, I just think uh, we spent a lot of time on it. It, it, it. it turned out really well. I sure hope so. I sure hope so. Um, we'll, we'll see what the lawyers think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <no>. <laughs> they <laughs> aren't quite as uh, uh, conscious of good literary, good literary, good writing, I think, as, uh, as, you know, as we are here, but we'll, we'll hope for the best. How's everybody? Uh, good. <clears throat> Better than all my family in Texas. <laughs> oh, that's bad. Well, yeah. we were lucky. We were lucky on the ice storm. Um, it melted off before it could do any real damage, at least up here. Was it? I don't know what how if the ice was worse or bet or, or or not so bad down in down in the lower elevations, Frank. Um, there's a little bit of ice on the on our on our dirt road, but the trees are all fine. The branches are fine. There wasn't any any buildup of any kind. Yeah. I mean, it's just ugly out there, but no, we didn't have any ice accumulation. Yeah, yeah and the wind picked up very strongly last night. I was glad that the ice had been by then, <laughs> yeah. so we didn't have that combination that could really, yeah. no, it could have really <laughs> tested our network more than we need to be tested. I think. I think we were five <laughs> degrees away from disaster. All right. <laughs> it was close. <clears throat> Gail, I have a little, uh, maybe later on if there's time, um, I've been looking into the cell tower issue and what's going on there. And I think it might be good to uh, just um, uh, talk a little bit about it. I've done some research. Great, yeah, I'd love, I'd love to hear more. I heard at the, the meeting last night that it's, it's mm -hmm. coming in June. And um, so, yeah, that's a great idea. I'll uh, add it to the, uh, the end of things here. <clears throat> okay. Anybody we are expecting or are not expecting? Haven't heard heard from anybody. Um, so I'll give it one more minute and then we will um, start because we do have quorum. Gail, just as we're waiting, um, are there going to be, what's the election situation this year? Uh, we are going to talk about that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. No, no worries. As town meeting is, you know, we're- Looming. It's looming. It's looming, but it's still going to be in June. So yeah. we have uh, a, a little more, Okay. a little more leeway. And hopefully we'll have a beautiful day out behind town hall. 
And if not, we all know how to sit in the rain. It's, <laughs> we know how to do that. So that's the plan is still an outdoor meeting. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. It'll be a lot, you know, I know many people will be vaccinated, <clears throat> but we still have a lot of, um, yeah. Uh, we're taking a low risk uh, stance. Hello, Graham. Yeah. Having trouble getting this thing to do a full view. Must be the internet. Must be. <laughs> Oops. Looks like we just lost Graham. We'll wait for him to return, then we'll start. Well, you never know about all, all that fiber on the other side of Lake Wyola. It's, you know, pretty, uh, pretty crazy over there. Pretty dicey over there. Oh, there he is. <clears throat> <clears throat> Well, I've only got a little picture on the screen. I don't know why the view isn't. Ah, there we go. Okay. You got it? This is better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. But, but, but we can't see you. I can't see you, Graham. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll turn on my video, too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That all works. Excellent. Uh, all right, so first order of business is approving the meeting minutes from uh, January 20th that uh, Jim sent around uh, yesterday. I'd like to make a motion to approve them. Second. 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 Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. <clears throat> um, Next is the HUT report. Graham, what do you have for us? Uh, yeah, um, as, uh, as Gail knows, I went along and uh, tested the, the freeze over temperature alarm last week and, um, and it went off okay. Uh, and, did, uh, and Gail, did it, I got no email from them, but did you get anything from them or? Yeah, okay, yeah, so. And, yep. and Crocker, did, does Crocker now get that as well? Is that, uh, oh good, okay, yeah. And then, okay, yeah, say anything there to that? Yeah, so I met with Tim today and we, we went through the procedure for um, each of each type of alarm of what should happen. So the next step is that on their end, they will um, finalize the kind of electronic notification and make sure that their technicians know what to do in every scenario. And then next week, um, we'll uh, run the, the test for real. Um, so, Going hot down. That's right. <laughs> okay. No <laughs> whole spot. Yep. Um, so we'll need, uh, I'll, I'll coordinate with you, Graham, a t timing for that. And yep. we're, we're, it, it is going to be kind of a watched test where it'll happen and we'll just make sure that everything happens in, the, in kind of the order that um, we needed to. So there's a couple of things for everyone to know. One is um, uh, as soon as next week, the non-alarm entry protocol is going to be put in place. This means anytime you enter the hut, the phone will ring and that's going to be Crocker calling. Even oh, if you have- that would be good. <laughs> yeah, right. Even if you disable the alarm, hmm. Crocker is still calling and they're going to kind of keep a logbook of 
who's in there, why you're in. So uh, really this applies to uh, Graham, Jim, Steve, me and Becky, if you ever need to get in there. Um, so just answer the phone, tell them who you are. They know your name. It's on a special list um, and why you're there. They'll, they'll uh, write it down. And then we also have the video recording records going back, you know, for a whole year, if we ever need to like watch what somebody did in there. Give it to the police, yeah. Yeah. No um, secret handshakes. No secret <laughs> handshakes yet. Um, we do have secret passwords, but no secret handshakes. Um, we can't show you the secret signal on, on the open meeting, Craig. Right. So. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm very aware. <laughs> Um, Will we need to know the secret password? <laughs> the only time you would need to know the secret password is if you panic and set off the alarm and just like can't, you know, you can't remember how to enter your code. And, and I've, that's happened to me before. <laughs> it's like, like, you know, that alarm is so loud and you kind of lose your brain a little bit. Um, so that's the only time that you would actually need the, the secret password. Well, Crocker, you, you might be able to talk your way around Crocker, but Simply Safe might not be able to be talked around because they probably just, the, the contract requires them to send the police if you don't. They, should, they should not be talked around it. Um, I, yeah. I, in fact, if anyone can't give the code, I, I want them to dispatch. Um, yeah. uh, so that's, that's going to happen. So you still um, got to know the secret word there, Steve. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Um, for the, uh, the temperature too high, too low, what's going to happen is an urgent email <laughs> will go out, um, to Steve, Jim, me, and Graham. Um, and it's, it just says, basically we've received a temperature warning. Please respond to one, uh, please respond to this message. If one of you can visit the hut. So our job is to respond all, if we're not doing anything, can run up to the hut and check out what's going on. Um, if they don't hear from any of us in an hour, they will, they'll dispatch, they'll, yep. they'll go to the hut. Um, and, and I think I've said before um, that, that if a fire alarm goes off, someone's get dispatched by Simply Safe. Right, um, immediately. So if it's only a temperature alarm, then we, we can be very confident, even, even as I tried to set off the Simply Safe temperature thing, the, uh, the exhaust fan kicked in because the the exhaust fan sensor was right next to where I was <clears> the uh, thing so um, so yeah, it's very unlikely you know we don't have to kill ourselves to get there um, because the exhaust fan is is almost definitely working um, to um, to cap it at um, at a reasonable temperature so Right. It's yeah. It's not a not a, a um, yeah. urgent urgent emergency. Um, so Graham, one thing I'd like to work with you on is um, putting together an uh, emergency response sheet that we can tack up in the hut. Um, I it occurred to me that there should be some numbers right there for us: police, fire, uh, simply safe. Crocker, like right on the wall there, as well as instructions for whoever's in there on what to do with the uh, mini splits if there's a temperature problem. Yep. You yeah. know, check this, press this, do this, um, because I know I haven't touched those in a year. And if I am, I, if I'm the one who goes there, I'm like, I'm not quite sure how to fix this temperature issue. So whether it's us or Crocker, something like that. Same for the generator. One of, I'll talk about it in a second, um, but if we should have a power outage and for whatever reason, our generator doesn't kick in, that's also gonna trigger an, a, a something for Crocker to do where they will, they'll, they'll go through a calling tree, calling each, each of us to see if anyone can, can respond. And again, if no one answers, they will go up there. They'll also call Pachoric um, because that means Pachoric something. Will, Pachoric will have a, um, an email an urgent email from Kohler because um, because that that one I, I don't know whether Gail you get the Kohler email but anyhow that, that's um uh, there'll, there'll be emails from Kohler as, as soon as as soon as the power fails and the right. generator right and I I should um get that too but I'll only get it if I'm sitting right in front of my email checking yeah, it yeah no so, there, there is that yeah um 
So anyway, we'll on that emergency sheet, we'll also need just simple directions for somebody of here's how you do a manual turn on of the, of the generator. Um, so uh, uh, Graham or Jim, I don't know. If it doesn't start automatically, right. we're probably not gonna, but, but we can try it, yeah. Right, so um, Jim, are you familiar with that process of how to do a manual restart on the generator? Yeah, yeah, the, well, the key's on the wall. I know that, because you got yeah. the key. You, you, know, you sent away for one, and um, it's pretty simple. There are just a few buttons to push once you take the case off the side of the generator. Right, um, so um, would you be comfortable um, writing those up, Jim, and sending them to me, the how to, how to do a manual restart? Okay. Um, um, Graham, we ought to, you and I ought to coordinate. You go look, yeah. Yeah. It'll, okay. it'll be, press the start button, and then you go inside, and you got to flip the, um, the, the automatic transfer switch to see if you can flip that over back. Um, right. Yeah. right. Make sure that the instructions are detailed enough that anybody could do them. You know, like really simple stuff, like take this key right here and stick it here and do this. Um, yeah, Becky? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we'll think about that. Um, we might not want, we, we might want, not want, it might be, it might possibly be that we don't want just anyone to try and. Yeah, that's my thought here. Oh, no, no, I'm not saying, I'm not saying anyone should do it. I'm saying just that, that keep in mind that, for example, if I, if I'm the one going up there, I've <laughs> never taken off that panel. I have no idea what I'm doing. So, you know, just make sure that, that there's, there's simple enough that someone in an, in an emergency situation could, could follow the instructions and, and press the right buttons. Yeah. Someone yeah. with authorized access. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All, right. All right, Becky. Oh, you're bu you're muted. You're, Becky, you're muted. No, you're making me really nervous, Gail. Um, there was conversation with Tim Pachoric. Um, he's he need you know he responds when we've had a couple situations and he's checked and they haven't been uh, problems. We had that one early on the first year that he walked me through. Um, I think the plan to be going it without him is really awful and uh, could jeopardize any, um, you know, you could screw up the whole generator potentially and lose any of, you know, the reason you're hiring him and have a contract with him. Uh, and but, Becky, is he on call? Is, is yeah. he on call for the, okay, yeah. So, so I think that so, really. Yeah. So avoiding him and going around him, I do not understand. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and what's his uh, contract? For, uh, does he supposed to turn up in an hour, two hours, four hours? What's the uh, idea? Well, remember? he can do a lot remotely. And that's why I, I think, Gail, I don't think you'd end up in the situation. You know, I, I think you make contact. He'll make contact with you if he has a point person, uh, like he made contact with me the one time I did it. Um, but I think it's really important to, to not undermine um, how, how about you- How this, Becky? How about, how about this protocol, Becky, is, is to call Pachoric and get him to tell you what to do. Yeah. Uh, because that, I think, I think he really understands uh, the Kohler things and what doesn't work on the Kohler. It really is supposed to work automatically. And if it's not working automatically, then- yeah. Um, you know, the, it's uh, this is something fundamentally screwed up, and we yeah, And if he's yeah. if he's already engaged and trying yeah. to be started remotely, and people show up and start doing other things, it can yeah. get problematic. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be on the on that list of phone numbers you were suggesting, um, Gail. That that it is. Uh, you know, if if power has failed and the generator is not running. Call Pacharik straight away. He's already getting an email from Kohler. So, you know, he'll probably be reaching out. Um, I don't know who's on your list for him to reach out to, but that's a good point. Yeah. I thought it was Graham. He should he should phone Crocker is what he should do. Yeah. <laughs> Crocker and Graham, I believe, are on it. And then yeah. Crocker would follow up with you all. Yeah. But you guys should not be the first ones in line to respond. Yeah. Crocker's Crocker is the 24-7 number that he Kohler. Uh, he, he, Pacharik, should be calling if he knows there's a generator. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, if Pacharik is talking to one of us and says, 
you know, gee, there's an ice storm, the trees are all down. Can you, if you can get there, I can walk you through what to do. That's a different scenario than us arriving, picking up a piece of paper, reading, oh, push this. I, I'm, yeah, I, I'd be wary of our. No, no Becky, Becky's yeah. right. Calling, calling Pachara can talk, you know. Uh, and, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and then the other thing is maybe, um, maybe, maybe it'd be good for us to get um, Crocker the call or um, email thing because then they'll see the generator turns on every week you know no big deal three three mail seconds throw away but they'll also see if they'll get a call or email if there is a power mm -hmm. uh, if there is a well they'll get a power they'll get a sick they'll actually get an, a useful email that'll tell them the generator has come on if the power has failed um and um and their their system might not know that. Um, no, they're they're already hooked up through the UPS. Okay, so so so, so they're they're monitoring that that part, so they will know if there's a power is, issue immediately yeah. already. Yeah, um, but as soon as as soon as the um, as soon as the generator comes on, they won't know that they're running on emergency power anymore because it'll look like their UPS has gone off, because you know the the cola generator and the utility look the same. To the UPS, it just um, you know it. it, it uh, so so it would be useful for Crocker to know um, the status um, from the email from Cola um, that the generator is still running. Great, right. I will make sure that they're getting the generator um, emails too. Yeah. Okay. So yep. so no uh, instruction sheet. Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, I guess. I guess. I guess. Don't worry about it. Um, I I was initially thinking, um, you know, that that if the power is out and the generator isn't running, our whole network is down. It's a mm -hmm. big bad no, we, thing. We have a know? problem. But have but, a problem. Yeah. but if we if we can rely on Tim for a fast response or him to direct us, okay, then that's the right well, avenue. But well, we should definitely it. show up at the at, you know, at the hut. I mean, that would be a really serious emergency in any case. So we ought to be there, regardless of whether. Um, you know, of what's happening, and then we can try to communicate with Pechoric. Uh, Graham, question, how long will those uh, UPS batteries last, or, you know, or keep things running? Um, you know, it's different. It, his, his stuff, um, I, I don't know. I don't know what his, um, I, don't, I don't remember what his criteria were. You know, the, 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 there's, you know, there's, we know that the whole thing pulls about two kilowatts and, um, and you see about four units of uh, four rack units of, of UPS so it can't be going to be holding it up for more than half an hour maybe max maybe uh, less it's it really that. it's really just to get you over the power bumps yeah the, yeah I know I know I just was curious to know how long yeah. how long those batteries might hold if something really really awful happened that's not a lot of batteries so yeah mm. yeah mm. <clears throat> All right, anything else about the hut that is um, all of the events? <clears throat> yeah, the hut was looking good when I was there the other day. Um, Gail, mm -hmm. um, I did have one person interested in wanting to do murals all over the hut. Nope. <laughs> It's hard no. <laughs> that's what that's what I gave him. I just thought I'd double check. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm not sure how they were going to do it because the surface definitely is not con conducive to me. No, painting. no, the fluting shape is very it's hard. To paint. No, <laughs> no. I I can't imagine any any mural that would enhance the look of it. <laughs> Oh. I can think of a few that would not, definitely not. <laughs> like the ones you see in New York City. Mm. Oh. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> did I answer too quick on that? <laughs> no. No, <laughs> no you, you did not. <laughs> no, you could put it on the town meeting question. <laughs> yeah. Warrant article. Warren articles. You know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, maintenance and service report, Graham. Uh, yeah, as um, uh, 
uh, the last month. Um, they only had, oh, it was maybe 30 uh, interactions and uh, there were hardly any, there was one open um, uh, waiting for, uh, so uh, they did very well. There wasn't much going on last month um, from the point of view of, of their help desk. And, uh, um, and, um, and I saw in the, uh, on the page for invoicing that they're still back at the end of August or something, according to that. I don't know whether, I don't know whether that's up to date. Is Gail, is the invoicing on their, on their repair stuff? Have they got past August yet? They have not. Uh, they have a deadline of Friday. Um, if they don't supply invoices by Friday, we will not be paying for uh, any more repairs. <laughs> Well, they're Ooh. way they're way behind, aren't they? Um, yeah. yeah, and um, and the uh, uh, and 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 I did in looking at the in looking up to the end of August, um, looking at the just the this is what we saw, um, I could see that there were about 10, um, 10, uh, 10 broken drops which got repaired, um, and uh, and the one um, the, the the one thing that as you look at the at the a lot of the drops, they temporary fixed them and then they went back and did a permanent fix. And I assume or I hope that that was because they were, they were waiting for parts that they didn't have the uh, material. But uh, mm. you can see that going out and doing a temporary fix is about 800 bucks. And then going out and doing the permanent fix is sometimes cheaper than the temporary fix because it's just like the original installation. You know, you're just putting in a putting in the part and um, so um, the, the temporary fix it, it, it's um, when we have the whole year's worth of, of um, stuff and and it looks like if you extrapolate on the year that we will have about um, like a, uh, a fifty thousand uh, dollars um, repairs um, uh, and there's a little bit of installation mixed into that isn't there but um, but Looking at that, it looks like a fifty thousand dollar year for uh, um, uh, assuming that um, that the last four months doesn't have um, anything really bizarre um, beyond the Montague Road repair, which uh, and and the January Hills repair. So yeah, looks like maybe fifty thousand total. So, um, so anyhow, um, yeah, I guess um, uh, I I did. Um, I was talking to Collins um, uh, last week, and uh, and they said um, they said that for you know four hundred dollars a month that they would be very happy to to be our on call uh, under the service contract, um, state service contract. So we could just we could just nominate them um, uh, four hundred dollars um, for their for their on call thing, but the benefits of that are that they actually look at the as built and when they dispatch they 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 will tell the person who they're dispatching what the what the drop is you know how many feet long you know what it is and also they up uh, they update the um the as built when um splices get repaired and get added or modified um so um so you know Maybe when we have all of the year's stuff, we should look at that again and, and think about whether uh, whether there's a more cost-effective um, uh, solution and more efficient and so on and so forth. Would this replace the $1,000 a month um, standby fee? Well, Crocker's got their own 24-7. Oh, you, you mean what we pay to Crocker? Yeah. No. Well, yeah, well, Crocker's also you know 24-7, so... You know, there's there's a service that they're doing as well, but um, so, so this is an additional. Yes, it would be well somehow or rather. Here's what I think might happen, or what what is plausible, and that is that Crocker Crocker is carrying something in their annual contract for for their you know for the call out thing, um, uh, and um, and so you know maybe they would just figure. Um, that they're sick of of this all the effort that it takes to get an invoice from a third party like Surtex or Triwire. That um, if if for the added value of um, uh, Collins just bills um, 
just bills directly to uh, Lever, for instance, and uh, and they're totally uh, totally able to do a proper invoice, very explicit, all according to the contract. Um, everything easy to understand. <laughs> they've they've got a good office, you know. Uh, this isn't rocket science to describe what one did and um, and how much it's going to cost. So anyhow. We, should think Grant, we currently have a contract with Crocker and to provide the uh, the maintenance and the service. Yeah. So but that's all like like the duration. Now that contract is, you know, it was a three year contract. It seems like well when that's when that's expiring, maybe we'll want to look into something different. But I don't. I guess I don't see us doing something different during while we're still in the contract we are with Crocker. Right, but the, Crocker has got the repair as just a hand on from from you know they, they I don't think they even have a markup on that do they Gail? Um, they're supposed to just get the repairs. Well, as not, a well, no, because we our contract with Crocker specifies how much we pay. Yep. And it doesn't matter who you know we we don't necessarily know what Triwire is charging Crocker. Um, right. Yeah, yeah, but it's time and way, it's try time wire. materials. Uh, but it is, is it not all repairs are time and materials, basically? Is that, is that not mm. true? Yes, but but our contract specifies what the 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 hourly rate is right. for you know whether it's a drop or um, um, a distribution, whether it's uh, you know business hours or after hours. Oh. Um, so. It, it's very possible that that Crocker would be happy to plug you well, up. Let's see how Surtex does, um, uh, because that's who's doing us now. Is that is that? So, so you're you're thinking of re no? Is Surtex is it back to Triwire? Surtex is only taking care of new installations. Okay. So is Triwire still doing everything? Okay. Everything else, yeah. Yep. So Graham, were you thinking of like renegotiating our current contract with, with Crocker to if say we'll take that? If Triwire can't perform, I think it's it's something we seriously should think about. Yeah. Well, um, except Triwire is performing the work just fine. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> but they 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 aren't able to handle the billing, but it's they're That's not Crocker's problem. Billing to Crocker. That's Wait, Crocker's problem. It's not our yes. problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I I agree with this. Our contract is not with Triwire. It is only with Crocker. Crocker can Crocker hire whoever paying, whoever they want. Crocker has been paying Triwire, have they? Oh, yes. right. I didn't realize but, that. I thought maybe yeah. the Triwire was running late on on billing. Oh, all right. Well, that's great. No, no, they they are running very late on billing. All right. Well, that, okay. So yeah. So yeah. All right. All right. So anyhow. Uh, somehow or other, there is a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a tri Triwire just has a has a back office that isn't very organized. You know, we saw this during the construction too, where um, you know their their billing and paperwork is is uh, terrible. By the way, Becky, I'm still trying to get uh, the prevailing wage reports from them. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, it's it it's been it's been months. So. Um, anyway, the, uh, but it is at the end of the day, it's Crocker's problem. Um, okay. and I have reiterated again and again that their, their contract is at risk because they're not hiring a subcontractor that's meeting our needs. Yeah. Right. Um, so. Well, as long as they meet them and they don't charge us, I suppose, you know, we are actually. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, if they want to do the work and don't bill a, uh, don't bill Crocker, so Crocker doesn't bill us. Well, let's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. But what we don't want to do is get a bill, you know, a year after the fact. Um, uh, yeah, I, you know, if they can reliably bill us a year after the fact, then then we know our budget for the coming year. Yes. <laughs> Uh, um we don't we don't I'm want joking to... i'm joking oh, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we're actually legally limited you know we cannot pay a bill from the prior fiscal year without a town meeting oh. 
That's us. a problem. Now, that's a problem. that gets tricky because since it's yeah. Crocker that's billing us, you know, the bill from Crocker has a current date on it. I guess technically we can pay that, except that if their bill shows that it's, excuse me, it's work from a year earlier. I, I don't know just what the uh, the gray area there is, but it's yeah. The, the answer, yeah, the answer here is to get out of the gray area to yeah. to make make the billing current. Um, yeah. You know, no, I, I would say no less than thirty days. Um, they know that we're not happy with the way that things yeah. are going, and that no um, more. Than no more than 30. And, right. And, and the bureaucracy has to allow a little of this. If there's a repair on June 20th, then sure. clearly we're not going to get billed until the next fiscal year. Right? So yeah, presumably there's a way to deal with that. Yeah. Well, if it's dated, am I muted? <laughs> now I have mute paranoia. No, if it's dated for, um, you know, in the B, if it's dated at the end of the year, there's a rolling period where right you can process the bills uh, you know just so that the dates are within june 30. yeah you have also. to go to a, a town meeting to get them paid so you have to wait nine months mm. Ugh. yeah all right um well let's uh let's move into financial report okay so Steve, you are up. Uh, do you want me to pull up the spreadsheet? Well, let me just give the current information first. Um, current balance, according to my calculations, is 178,094. And we have receivables from Crocker of 39,545 due this month, 39,766 due next month. These are bills I've actually submitted to them. Um, so, you know, there are um, uh, monthly fee billings are holding steady in the $39,000 range. Um, upcoming expenses, as uh, was mentioned, we do have about $4,500 worth of bills now actually received from Crocker for the maintenance work through last August. And, expecting more to come. Well, that's 4,500. Yes. Yeah, but that's small. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, we will have the um, debt payment uh, due in April. It's, I believe, 105,000. Mm -hmm. that'll, that'll knock the, the ba current balance down. And we are working on the uh, FY22 budget. So uh, Gail does, I, I think Gail sent a spreadsheet around with that. And Gail, you want to bring it up? You want to sure. Talk? All right, that's nice and big so everyone can see it. Um, so um, I'll start on um, just our, our the regular draft. Um, Steve has highlighted any big changes. So I'll just, uh, Steve, do you wanna just go through line by line and talk about it? Yeah, I mean, the biggest change is in the uh, maintenance budget, which of course is the <laughs> difficult one to, do we discuss at great length, um, but it's just that that hundred eight thousand we had in last year. It it just seems like we're not we're not going to run that. I, I believe we got that figure from Leverett, and so um, I'm just you know said well 
let's try 60,000. That still seems like um, plenty of, uh, you know, still seems like a very good, uh, good budget there. And so to date in FY21, we have how much in actual maintenance? I was afraid somebody would ask. <laughs> <laughs> Approximately, <laughs> ball, ballpark, ballpark. Um, I added it up. It's um, it's running according to the thing they sent us uh, this month. Uh, Crocker had billing for um, thirty nine thousand dollars, roughly. Um, uh, no, eighteen thousand dollars built. Um, yeah. those, are, those are two different ballparks. Eighteen thousand dollars built, and so I extrapolated for the year, and it made it look like maybe you know forty five thousand maximum. Knowing that some of the lump, some of the things at the end are chunky, um, uh, you know the 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 road repairs that we know about on Montague Road and um, and January Hills Road. So, so yeah, sixty thousand comfortable. Mm -hmm. Good. But we, but we don't really have uh, real figures on those expensive repairs yet. Correct. Yeah. Well, we do have through our Hills. January Hills shouldn't have been that expensive. It's basically no, it just shouldn't have been much at all. It's just rehanging the wire. No. And <laughs> Jim and Jim and I did it for about nothing. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> there was no spicing or anything. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we have the bills through August, which included the um, the the windstorms in May and in August, uh, the tropics down in August. So now, of course, the other thing is we still have uh, uh, we still have four and a half months left of, of this year. So we do, we do. Right. Although since since December. Well, I get. I guess it's only two months, but we have had no dispatches. That's good. Either either for drops or mainline repairs. For no, the there, this, there is still winter. there is still potential for ice storms though. Before yeah. We, uh, yes, yeah, we're we're definitely not out of the woods. <laughs> well, that's you know that number is just going to be so volatile every year. Yep, it's all it's always going to be our biggest variable to plan for. Yep. Uh, Steve, do you want to keep talking about the the uh, line items here? Okay, uh, the employment overhead, which we budgeted four thousand dollars last year, it was uh, apparently based on the understanding that the manager's uh, stipend included uh, health care which was understandable because the previous time uh, we, we had that in there, it did. So it does not. And I've been working with uh, Ryan on this. And the only two things we've got are Medicare and workers' comp. The Medicare, we know the exact figure on it. The workers' comp um, don't have an exact figure, but I, I threw in 1% there um, just as a placeholder at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, Steve? Yeah. Um, I think there's also going to be retirement at, mm. be added to well, that. Oh, okay, if you could look into we, that. We don't get, uh, the town employees don't have Social Security taken out, um, so they need, they have um, a, a separate retirement program just like state employees, and um, uh, that, that needs but, to be calculated in there too. Okay, but Gail, you through an assessment at the end of the year. It's not coming out of the paycheck. Okay. G Gail, are you um, part of the Franklin County? Is, is it being deducted for the Franklin County retirement system for you or for the deferred um, uh, compensation? Do you know? I have no idea. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll uh, Can you talk scroll just, a little farther. 
Yeah, I'm, before we go there, I'm just going to talk about this one, Steve. Yeah. So this this lifeline, Westfield has done no movement on this. So um, uh, we'll see if they make any progress over this next year. But we still need to keep the budget item in there for it. Okay. The rest of this is either fixed or relatively inexpensive. So, I mean, up until uh, up until well, until, we, up, until, up, until like 19, up until nineteen, yes, up yeah. Until this. Um, and the the um, the debt service here. Two of the items are required. You know, we, we are not optional for us. Yeah, uh, excuse me, the payment on the uh, the 10 year note that comes due each April and the interest on the um, on the band that comes due in August. So then the optional item is how much we put towards the principal of the uh, of the band in yeah. August. And <clears throat> so in this tab where we're and this tab is with making no change in our monthly um, subscriber fee, putting $130,000 towards the, uh, the ban. And then when you get down to the other highlighted item, the uh, extraordinary and unforeseen or the emergency reserve fund, what that is is that's the leftover between the amount we take in in subscriber fees minus all of the expenses. Um, last year we had budget, the budget had a $42,000 excess. I just see that as, as more than is needed. So I've dropped that down to 22,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for us, really, this is like a secret maintenance reserve fund. Right. right. Well, not really sure. a secret, but there's I, like I can't really anticipate that there's going to be a lot of um, any any large expenses that we would incur um, for for this besides maintenance. You yep. know, I, I guess a piece of expensive equipment could break in the hut, um, and we we might have to repair that. But uh, uh, yeah, it's not. I I think that that would. You know, I think our most expensive piece of hut equipment is like four grand. So, um, yep, yeah. So that should be able to come out of the regular maintenance pipe. Right, right. Um, you know, the one thing we've tapped that uh, for so far this year was the the Calix Lifeline uh, uh, fee came in higher than we budgeted. So we uh, right this one right here. Calix essential support, yeah, you know, we had budgeted fifty nine ninety five. Bill came in at seventy five ninety five. So that difference had to come out of something. So Gail Weiss just took it out of the uh, that um, reserve fund. So it's good to have a little something there to cover yeah. that. But you know, we didn't. We don't need forty two thousand in that. The other thing you remember about a reserve is. At the end of the fiscal year, all of any excess funds we have go into the uh, retained earnings account, which is kind of a limbo that it sits in until the following year's annual town meeting can be appropriated for a purpose. And you know, our plan is to appropriate it towards um, paying down the the, the ban debt, but. Mm -hmm. If in fact something happened that we really needed that money for something else, we could ask the select board to call a special town meeting. And in two weeks, we could have a special town meeting that could appropriate some of that, those funds towards something we actually needed it for. So that's a whole separate little reserve that, uh, that you know, is not available to us immediately, but it's not uh, tied up really long-term. Steve, how much do we have sitting in, in, in the retained earnings for last year? And, well, and where is it, I, or how, or how we spend it, or what? 
No, we're we're planning on it's uh, appropriating that towards the um, paying down of the ban in August. It's a uh, uh -huh. Gail. Do you have that other? There's, there's a lot of money, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, I don't have it at my fingertips. It would take me a little bit to look it up. Okay, um, if I can figure out how to reduce <laughs> to get back into another program on my computer, because it, it's saved view. How about yeah, Excel? The, yeah, there okay. you go. Yeah. Um, Yeah, one hundred twenty-three thousand five forty-four was <clears throat> FY. It was the uh, retained earnings from last year, last fis fiscal year twenty. One hundred twenty-three. Uh, so that would be combined, uh, perhaps, with one hundred thirty thousand. Uh, to uh, to reduce the principal, this right? And, and Got it. Um, if, if we go with this, now we have another <clears throat> budget with reducing the the um, subscriber fee, in which it would be a lower um, amount would go towards the debt. So, Gail, do you want to switch to the other tab and show the other option here? Yep, we're on it. Oh, okay. So we are. So this is a alternative budget in which we reduce our subscriber fee from $52 a month to $47 a month, which reduces our revenue. Um, and the two things that change on the expense side with that is instead of putting 130,000 towards the ban in August, the principal on it, we put 87,000 towards that. And then the emergency reserve fund is in the same ballpark, but it's 20,000 20, instead of 22,000. Otherwise, I left all the expenses the same. So the way I see it is, is the question we're really asking is, um, do we want to uh, slow down our ban payment and pay less towards that and reduce subscriber fees or not? And what I'll just add from this, when I bring this up, does, does everybody see this now? Yeah. Okay. Um, this spreadsheet shows the amount due on the uh, the current balance of principal balance of the ban is four hundred six thousand eight seventy. Um, the lower part of it here it shows how we could come Steve, up. Steve, we're not we're not seeing your spreadsheet. Oh. Okay. Uh, let me stop stop sharing. Oh, I see. I see. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Diff okay. Different spreadsheet. There you go. All right. You should be able to take over now. Okay. So the current principal on the band is 406,870. I don't. Um, so, uh, oh, we still, still don't see it. Sorry. Yeah, nothing mm. here. Um, at the bottom of your screen, there's a green up arrow that says share screen. It's at the bottom of the Zoom window. The window with all our pictures. Mm. Well, depending on how you have it set. Not sure. Oh, okay. There we go. Now you're heading, yep. heading in the right direction. Okay. Oh. 
Okay. I'm still careful. waiting, but here it is. There you go. Yep. Done. Great. Okay. <laughs> yep. Please move this window away. I don't think you have to do it, Steve. We can see it. Okay, but but yeah. it, my screen keeps. Oh. Oh, anyway. Okay, from the top. <laughs> we owe the, the, the current balance of the ban 406,870 due on August 20th of 2021. Either has to be paid or renewed. And so I've got a plan here where we could pay down 236,000 of that, which that comes from the sec, the lower part of the spreadsheet, funding sources. That 123,544 retained earnings is just sitting there. Town yep, meeting yep. needs to vote it. It's very straightforward. 25,500, uh, the final MBI grant money, which the select board has already okayed that going towards it. And then taking $87,000 in our FY put, putting $87,000 into our FY22 um, budget towards uh, uh, debt, towards the reduction of that debt, which would be the figure I'm saying with the, that's the figure we get with the $5 um, monthly fee reduction. Comes to 236,000. We do that, it leaves a balance on that ban of 170,000. I'm projecting that a year from next August, so in August of 2022, if, if this if the ban is rolled over for one year in August at the reduced at that rate of 170,000, that we could pay off that 170,000 or come very close to doing it in a year by appropriating another 87,000 in the FY23 budget. Leaves that would leave about eighty three thousand left, and I'm projecting that our retained earnings for the current fiscal year will be about eighty three thousand dollars. Again, it all depends on where the maintenance, <clears throat> what, what we spend sure, for maintenance sure. in now in June. But sure. I, I went through the budget without knowing I needed to reach eighty three thousand, and just said, okay, you know, we're going to spend all of this line item, but we're not going to spend all of this one. We'll probably spend so much. And I came up with about 83,000 left over. And then I looked, well, that's about what we need. So, so I'm fairly comfortable that by reducing our subscriber fee by $5 a month, starting in July of this year, that we can still pay off that ban in two years. Or, as I say, or come very close. You know, say there's ten thousand dollars, thousand dollars left. Well, that's what this is at the next year, um, and there's no way we can pay it off this year. Sure. So this, all of this, is assuming that we reduce by by five dollars a month our subscriber fees. This this spreadsheet that's up right now, yeah. based on that, yes. Yeah, that's right. Just for curiosity, what are we paying for interest for the bands? What are we paying for those? It's extremely low, very, zero point nine five percent. It's crazy yeah. low. That is pretty low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's and, it, it's another wild card. Those you know that those that could go up, um, but I don't think we're going to see it go up wildly. Right. But I don't think we're going to see it go much lower. No, no, you know, it's, it's, it's it costs it's them lower. that much money to to yeah. just process the paperwork of it. Um, you right. know, it's like our, our payment is the interest payment to the bank is going to be thirty eight hundred dollars in August for a year's worth of interest. Um, so it's. To me, a reason I like the idea of seeing if we can get this paid off is let's pay it off while the interest rates are so low because they might go up and it'd be good to get rid of as much of this as we could while, while the rates are so low. 
Right. Well, the, the, the counter argument is, well, the interest rates are so low, you might as well have the money because <laughs> you're not paying for it. If you, you know, if you take yeah. any chance to get rid of it, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. But the, the other argument is we're going to be talking a bit about, about potential competition down the road. Yeah. And so this right. will allow us, this would allow us to reduce our rates still further, not this year, but in some subsequent year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, and I, yeah. I like that. That that's that is good strategically, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Craig, you make a good point that being able to lower when we had to, if we right, had, right. Is very is very mm -hmm. useful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We don't. Yeah, I, I would see this five dollars. Hopefully, as as a first step on on uh, fee reduction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if, if everything continues to go well, and we get this debt paid down in a couple of years, that you know, we could uh, have a further fee reduction. So by my estimation, once our debt obligation is done completely, we can drop our rates by what, 20, $25 a month? Yeah, but the-, the That's gonna be nine years from loan now. Is a I know, I know, I, under, I, I understand that. I understand okay. it's, yeah. And you know, at that and point- And the maintenance will go up. Likely. I would assume. Not, not very much. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, because we are. Yeah. We've, we're carrying a we're carrying a retainer for our equipment. So. Good and, point. No, that's know, I mean, true. We're putting we're putting thirty seven thousand dollars aside every year into the broadband stabilization fund towards the replacement of the electronics. Yep. So, you know yep. this that's included in this budget is we're we're socking that money away. Yes, the really good shot. Is it, but it's, I mean, maintenance of the outside plant that, yeah, as it ages. It doesn't, not much happens to it. You know, it, trees trees are the maintenance issue. Trees yeah, hit it and yeah. it breaks. It's good for 40, 50 years. Otherwise, the-, the I, I, I agree. Look, look how long uh, Verizon has, has had that copper wire. <laughs> well, we don't, we don't want to use that analogy. <laughs> Um, I just had a question on the Crocker contract. The three years is up next year? Correct. So next year, you're going to be going potentially either you'll negotiate, you'll, you'll go out to bid, I assume, or? Sure. Um, so when you go out to bid, it just seems like that would be, it would, you know, waiting until after you know where that's coming in. Um, might be helpful just because once you know you go down you can't go back up again very yeah. easily so so you're you're raising the idea that when we go out to bid we might get bids that are five dollars a month more expensive on on the isp side mm -hmm. they could be i think yeah, yeah. raise yeah. their rates on leverett the first year and, yeah and yeah no that's a real problem that's a real concern yeah. that's a good point good yeah. point yeah. yeah but the other side is all the more reason for us to lower our yeah, no, but, but not do it all we know. <laughs> no, because all the customer cares about is the bottom amount they yeah. pay. Yeah. So don't do it until you know. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, so, yeah, so, if we, so if we kept our fees as they are for the next coming year, we could presume we pay the debt down even farther? Yes. Yeah. I, we won't pay it off completely any quicker. No. But um but we can we'll get further along the way yeah yeah yep i would agree with uh both craig and becky on this one that we ought to wait and not lower the fees for this upcoming fiscal year but you know put the you know put the extra cash whatever it is towards reducing the debt just re getting rid of that expense um, as soon as we can, I, I, I just feel strongly that that's probably the best way, or that is the best way to go. And just and and, and wait until the, uh, you know, those two reasons, what Becky had to say and what Craig had to say, I think are really important. So I, I, I would not uh, offer to you know, lower the rates this this coming fiscal year. And, yeah, and that, and I don't think anybody's expecting it either. You know, this is this is a brand new. Was, this is a still a very young enterprise, and uh, you know, a lot of things we a lot of things can happen uh, repair wise. One thing or another, it's, they're just 
it would be good just to postpone that uh, for at least another year. I mean, it's also true that not raising the rates is, is not as good as lowering them, obviously, but, yeah. but I mean, when, you know, people aren't used to things being not the, you know, the same every year. Yeah. And I, I think I, you know, at the, Gail, at the all boards meeting, I think you did kind of outline a scenario of your top priority being to pay off the debt and then consider, um, lowering rates afterwards. So you've set expectations um, that are easy to live with. Yeah, um, yeah, I was careful to say, not tell anyone that we're, you know, right now exploring lowering rates. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I um, after this conversation, I agree. I, I think we should uh, keep things the way that they are and revisit this next year. Mm -hmm. when we know who our ISP is going to be, know how much it's going to cost, um, and um, be in a even better position with our debt. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Yep. Everyone what's good? the time, what's yeah, the time frame? Sense. For, We're not time? really much different position with that, but e either what? way, we're looking at paying off the debt in that the paying off the, um, the ban in August of 2022. What's the time frame for, for going out to bid and getting our final decision made next year? Um, well, Crocker's contract um, uh, kicked in on July 1st, 2019. So their termination would be July 1st. 2022. So I'd like to have us um, maybe go out to bid in uh, January, February next year and have a contract signed by, I don't know, April. I don't, I, I welcome advice on this of, of how long this sort of thing typically takes. Um, but we should know who our ISP is, I would say two, at least two full months before Crocker's contract expires. Or, or maybe more important is we need to know it before town meeting. Right. Yeah. And we might have a normal date for town meeting. It might be back on to the end of April in 22. Yeah. I would, I would, I would even consider going out in September. Um, really? Oh, wow. Well, that's when we were doing the initial ISP contract was in the fall. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, that was, of course, for a startup of something, and Crocker worked closely on the, the, the completion of the construction, having won the bid. Uh, we've got a, a network that's up and running now, may not be as complicated uh, for a new ISP to come in, but... Yeah. It just gives you extra room in case you in, end up in a situation where you're looking at a different provider and... yeah have a lot to figure out it's 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 better to have extra room room than coming in too tight great yeah idea. and that's a good point because when you consider someone bidding they'd rather if they have to hire new people they like to they, they need planning time themselves don't they so um so yeah knowing that knowing that they're gonna get a new contract in a few months time you know, three, four months time is better than knowing that it's next month or, yeah. So doing it early is, is a good idea. All right, so what uh, what should be our target date to um, uh, say, say get, get the bids out? Um, I'd say get it out by October 1st. I mean, cause you've okay. got work going into it ahead of time. Sounds good. Yeah, they'd have like what thirty days to respond. Yeah. So, someone knows. Gail, does, Gail, does your day job get really bad in the beginning of September? <laughs> September is the worst. I know. Um, that's, I'm I'm aware. That's why it's I'm the worst. It <laughs> um, I how about how about we you know we we make it like um uh what if we made it going out on November first? Okay, great. Okay. 
think that's reasonable. So that in December we would be reviewing bids. Right. So so I I'd, I'd say that we um we we get it out um like November first, have it due around December first. You know, full month later, and then we have all of December, part of January to noodle over it and make the announcement in um in January. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That sounds good. All right, I'm just making a note of this for um, next year on my massive to-do list, which never gets any shorter. <laughs> Do on. So, so if I understand, we're 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 leaning towards keeping our fee structure to the customer as is, right? Correct. Um, I'm fine with that. Um, it's conceivable, although unlikely, that some some fee fiscal curmudgeon is going to try to tell us we should lower our rates. So we need to have our our arguments ready for that. Um, yep. And our arguments are, are going to be that um, with unknown interest rates, we want to get the band paid off as soon as possible. And we have to go out to bid for a new network operator and ISP within the next, you know, if someone asks this at town meeting, we're like within nine months. Uh, so I, we I would, yeah, I would argue the ISP thing and I would argue that we still are, don't, this might've been a particularly good maintenance year. We just don't know. Mm -hmm. um, as opposed to, I wouldn't overemphasize paying down the band because, you know, yeah. somebody might right. argue that why should I have to pay down the band for somebody five years from now? You know, why, whatever. Yeah, I think I think that the ISP reason is our our strongest reason for yep. this. Um, we don't we don't want to lower rates and then raise them again. You know, yep. it's just not okay. So yeah, yeah uh, on the ban issue, I would still advocate for the five dollar reduction because either way, we can essentially pay it off on the same date. Um, and I see advantages to offering a, a lower rate, but. I do think, okay, if we do want to tie it all into a uh, the new ISP, not not knowing what that's going to be, um, might even might even tweak our our um, figure to make it uh, our MLP fee to make it um, work well with uh, whatever the ISP figure is. Um, Right. Our, our goal is to... I, I, I'm not 100% convinced we should not reduce the fee, but um, I'm, I'm yeah. okay with, with holding it. Where... I, I'm in a similar boat. Mm -hmm. Well, we can all noodle on it and, and bring <laughs> it up again next month if, if, if anyone has more thoughts on it. Um, we have, we I have think the idea of, of, of tying rate reductions to our next uh, ISP negotiation is, is a reasonable one. I mean, it's yeah. totally. independent, independent of everything else. Yep. Well, it's also the notion of splitting the difference. I mean, you could, you could, you could go two bucks, not five bucks or whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, seriously, you could, that's a reduction is a reduction. Eric, I'm yeah. laughing because initially I proposed a, I, I wrote up a, a potential budget with a $2 reduction. And then I said, well, let's try it with five. And I had the tabs on the Excel spreadsheet labeled as the $2 draft and the $5 draft. And I sent it to Gail and, you know, there was some talk, maybe I was talking about a cheap beer or an expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I was going to say $2 draft, the AC's closed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know what I mean? I think we could split the difference. I mean, you could have it both ways. You could lower it and say we're, we're, we're conservatively lowering the rates and because we want to keep our powder dry and here's why. And that's totally logical. But at the same time, we're lowering the rates because we can lower them some. We could say that. We could. Yeah, mm -hmm. our... Yes. Yeah, our MLP fee is is um, fifty two dollars right now. So you know we could we could lower it to an even fifty. The customer doesn't care about that. They just care about the seventy five yeah, yeah, versus seventy three. Yeah, they don't they don't care about the rest of it. Yeah.
And I really think if we keep it the same, that's that's almost for people going to look at people all subscribing to Netflix and YouTube TV and all that stuff. That stuff doesn't stay the same every year. You know, they're well aware of the fact. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So they're well aware that if we stay the same, we're actually that's we're we're in good shape, I think. Yep. Mm hmm. Okay, I vote for keeping it the same again. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. And so do I. I do too. I try, can I vote? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> both ways. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll vote twice. Yeah, I think, I think I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards keeping it the same too. Um, from a, a you know, just like a business perspective also, our price point is right, where we know that um, we're beating out other competitors, not that there, there is, but, but we're already saving families a lot of money by offering this service. And yes, it would be lovely to, you know, offer them more, but a $2, you know, a year difference is not gonna, gonna make a big difference, um, but, you know, when we can do five dollars, seven dollars, ten dollars, then that's that's going to be a really nice big impact um, in a couple of years, or even next yep. year, or even yep. next year. Yeah. Yep, yep. It, it seems to me that Leverett uh, dropped their price when they made the change from Crocker to OTT. wasn't Wasn't that the point at which their fees dropped as well? I mean, I think, it, yeah. it, it was at least two to three years after 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 LeverettNet started up. So this, we're sort of following roughly the same pattern. Yep. Yeah, they did. They lowered their price a little when they yeah. got up. All right. So does everyone feel all right about leaving things as they are for one more year? And we okay. will revisit this um, next year at the same time. Yep. Yep. We good? Sounds okay. good. There she goes. Great. Um, all right, moving on. A um, couple of other things. Uh, so the surety bond response um, has been returned. Uh, special thanks to Jim and Graham and Steve for helping me. We did Quite a few iterations <laughs> okay. Did we ever? Of, of the letter, um, but the the end result was um, a masterpiece. I, <laughs> I don't even go that far. Yeah. Um, oh, it, it was very good, Gail. It yeah, was it was it was focused. It was very yeah, focused. It was very it, focused. It, it it we cut out all of the fluff arguments and had just our strongest ones. So um, we'll see. Uh, it's 180 days before either they're going to give us a ruling or somewhere in there, they're gonna schedule a hearing. Um, so we're just in the waiting stage now. Um, let's see. Um, also, I wanted to talk a little bit about last meeting, we brought up the idea of security um, and the idea of adding a little bit more oversight to Crocker for what kind of security uh, services they have. This was as a result of the, the solar winds issues that some other big companies were having. Um, <clears throat> so I got, uh, I asked Holyoke Gas and Electric if they would be willing to act as kind of a security auditor for us because we don't, as in our team, have that kind of expertise. They um, very um, graciously declined. Um, mm -hmm. They said they don't want to set a precedent of, of working against potential competitors in that way. They can't uh, handle the liability um, and uh, they don't feel like they can afford to hire out their staff to do that kind of thing. So all fine. Um, Jim Crowley did give me the name of three other local security firms that um, could do that kind of work for them. I haven't contacted them or anything. I want to speak to all of you first. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of a, it, it's not really a full security audit that we're looking for here. We're looking for more of somebody who knows security to just ask some questions of Crocker and make sure they're following industry best practices because none of us really know what that is. Um, just get basically get another pair of eyes on it. 
Um, Kent asked his son who works in some kind of internet security field. And there's something called um, a SIG standardized form. It stands for standardized information gathering. And it's a kind of a repository of um, third party information and security and privacy questions. They're, uh, they cost thousands of dollars. Um, they're indexed to multiple regulations and different control frameworks. They're, they're huge. They're like 300 different questions. Um, so um, my sense is that they're used more for um, like banks and healthcare industries. And Crocker, when I asked Crocker, can you just look into this? Do you know what this is? They, they said the same thing. Like this is way overkill for what, what you want. Um, they're very open to doing any kind of audit we want, but I also, I don't want them to waste their time and I don't wanna get back something that I don't wanna wade through 300 questions that I don't understand either. Yep. So, um, so I see a couple of directions we could take. I could contact these three security firms and just give them a rundown of kind of who we are and what we're looking for of somebody like, could you spend um, you know, a, a day or half a day um, putting together a small security audit and having a conversation with Crocker to make sure they're following industry best practices. Um, uh, the other thing I, I could see doing is um, seeing maybe if Kent's son could help us out by saying, just give us a list of the tw like 20 questions of that we should be considering when it comes to security have Crocker answer them. And then if Kent's son is willing, just look at them and say, here's, you know, the ones that look good. Here's the, here's the potential holes that I see. Um, it, it, I guess it really depends how much money do we want to spend on this? How much time do we want to spend on this and how kind of professional do, do we want it to be? Or do we just want um, another pair of eyes on it? Thoughts? Uh, I have a question, Graham. Do you know anybody at UMass in this in this area who might want to freelance? It's always really, really hard to tell who in security in the the IT security section knows anything because you know they they <laughs> they all talk mumbo jumbo and and you can't really <laughs> tell much anyhow and they won't tell you much because vulnerabilities and their own so so um but it, it did occur to me that um uh, i i'd be uh, happy to reach out to the three names in calyx that uh um, because they should understand they calyx should understand exactly what security their equipment best needs and also they should understand where where some network operators have screwed up, they might they might give some useful insight on on just um, on just because we have a particular sort of situation. Like you say, we're not a bank, and Crocker's is not a bank. It's not a financial thing. You know, um, uh, we have to depend on those third parties to do all those things that they have to do. Um, we're not a medical thing. You know, uh, they're not Crocker's is not a med. So so anyhow, I. How about that, Gal? I'll, I'll I'll ask the um, the Calix people uh, uh, what they would um, whether they have any particular angle on that. So the Calix people are not the people that HGE recommended, right. right? But they should understand they should understand what the issues might be. I would think. Yeah, but would so, would they though? Is is there? I think of them as more like hardware providers. And this is a this is a combination of both hardware and various software. Yeah, but uh, but somehow or other, their 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 stuff has to run in there um, without getting hacked and without I don't know. It, it seems like they might uh, they might have some insights. So I, I would ask them. I, I don't think there's much point in my going to um, UMass because um, because of all sorts of. Uh, That's you know, fine. That's fine. Yeah. You know. It just occurred to me that if I were pro if I had the expertise and I was approached on this, I would ask myself, how much time is it going to take me? But I'd also ask, what kind of liability am I putting myself in, right? If I say, yeah, your system checks out and then next week you're, you're hacked by the Ukrainian whatever, you might, you might come back and sue me for not having 
ask the right questions. Your contract, uh, Craig, your contract will have been written by your lawyer that, that will guarantee uh, to us. That un understood, understood. So the, these three companies that HG&E is recommending will presumably have already thought about this and- Oh yeah. And right, oh, yeah. Um, but, but somebody off the street, I don't know. I, I would I would tell you as a chemist, when people ask me for chemistry questions, I just say, I'm sorry, I can't help you because um, I just don't want to get tied up in something that I don't know what might happen later down the road. Yep. It's sad. It's unfortunate, but. Yeah, Becky. Um, a, a couple months ago, um, Grace the town clerk was uh, and I were talking and she said there had been somebody reaching out uh, about internet security issues and whether we wanted an audit or not at the town level. Um, I'm going to reach out to her and, and get talk to her more and get the contact information and see if there's if it's similar to what you're looking for. Um, but it was through the, um, you know, the state IT department and. Oh, okay. That'd be great. If but, it's a state IT, if it was just somebody cold calling her, I would say, forget it. No, no, but, it, it's, um, they were contacting her as, you know, a municipal officials. Gotcha. And, um. Yeah, that, that sounds a good idea. That, that sounds like it could be great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll ask, I've started to email her now, but I'll follow up on that and see if we get anything. Great, sure. thank you. Sure. All right, uh, moving on. Uh, quick item about uh, govern governance. Um, my term and uh, Steve's terms expire this year on the MLP board. We're both of us are, are expiring. Um, and what I'd like to suggest is that I actually leave the board and stay on as a manager and that um, Steve runs again and Graham runs so that the, the board would, the elected board would be Jim. He's still, he's still on it. Um, and then Steve and uh, Graham get elected as, as the new members of, of the board. Um, I think having this, you know, separation between the board versus manager, you know, the board being the kind of the decision making body, and then the, the manager being the day to day um, executor of, of the, the tasks is it's just a better model. Um, and I, you know, I did get like special dispensation to be on this board. So just as an, an ethical thing, I think it's better. Um, and also it, it just gives more flexi flexibility. Um, I, I'm, I'm good now, I'm having a good time, this is all fine, but if I wanna go you know, leave in somewhere in two years, I don't wanna leave you both without a board member and without a manager. So um, those except are my- for that last, Except for that last statement, I think everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, that, that's those, those are my thoughts. I've already spoken to um, Graham and Steve, and they're both willing to run again. I think that's great. Good, good. Um, so when, Becky, when does that election paperwork have to be in, knowing that our town meeting is in June? I think it's April. I don't have a date yet, but I, I think it'll be in the town newsletter. Um, and, and Becky, what? I assume the forms are online, are they? Uh, are they uh, one can go to the town hall uh, webpage and find um, application forms for. I don't know if they're there yet. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. But, and oh. currently, Gail and I held the three year terms. Um, so I don't know. Will these be two, three-year terms, or will will we try? Will it be staggered? Do we need to look at a calendar to? I think it, normally it would stay what it is. the The three-year term would go to the new person, and Gail's um, would go to Graham, and yours would stay another three-year term. But if you, for some reason, wanted two years, you guys could. Um, I'm I'm fine with staying another three-year term. I just didn't know if, if we 
because this tied in with reducing the board size from five members to three members. So, uh, G Jim, how long is your term? Do you know? At end of 22, on a, a July 22. So that's next year. Yeah, and that'll be no. my third and third year. So we could do a two and a three with his one, and then we'd be on a on a one every year. We could, but it might not it might not be a big enough problem to even bother, right? Yes. That's fine with me too. Yeah, yeah I, I I'm fine with keeping it. Yeah. But if there was a need to to deal with that, we could. So yeah. Anyway, we can think about that in the next month or two. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Think think about it. I'll 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 bring it up again um, so that uh, we can get all the the paperwork in that you need by April. Very good. Do we need nomination papers running for re-election? Yeah. 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 How do we get nominate? How do we need uh, in yes. signatures, or can that be done? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, you got to have signatures. You could do 10 we sheets. Have to do, we have to do real signatures. Um, but there might be a new alternative. I don't know about yet. So we'll okay. work on that. Whatever. Just. Yeah. We need a fireman's breakfast outdoors. Right. Yeah, it's only it's only like ten signatures, right? That's needed. If it's twenty. Okay. Twenty, we can do. That's not a problem. I can get yeah. to ten probably. Maybe twenty-five, but I can get you ten. Oh. Yep, and and one thing that we could do too is um, uh, during uh, we could during our next meeting we could um, make it a point to all meet outside at the town hall. And that's, you know, almost 10 signatures right there. Uh, all right. Looks um, like the phone is in the, the wheat field there behind you, Craig. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last order of business is, uh, Jim, you had some things you wanted to relate to us about the upcoming cell tower. Yes, um, I, I, I looked into this matter a little bit uh, because, well, you know, Craig is the one who mentioned potential future competition and all of that. And this is something we need to be aware of. Uh, the tower is being put up by a company called Vertex. Um, and uh, they, through some negotiations with the town, they've gotten the permit to do it. I think you've all heard about this at the meeting last night. Um, and FirstNet is going to be the, the initial, the initial um, uh, company that sort of signs on. That, this is an AT&T company. And FirstNet is um, uh, just for historically, they, their money comes from the 2012 um, um, act um, that uh, took place after the after the crisis, the economic crisis of you know 2008, when there was a lot of money uh, sort of thrown around for all sorts of things, but that and they, I guess, um, there, the first net is is uh, and is devoted to um, uh, um, um, <laughs> the term. Yeah, yeah, first responders. And yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a first, it's a first responder network, one thing or another. So, um, so, and apparently, some seven to eight billion bucks were um, were appropriated by the U.S. government to you know to pay for this. And there's a whole network of towers all over the country. And now there will be one uh, in Shrewsbury. The tower itself. This is what I found sort of curious. The tower itself has. Um, uh, six position, six additional potential positions for other users, um, uh, which could be Verizon. Who knows? T-Mobile. We don't know. But in other words, this isn't just reserved for just FirstNet. It, it, it could go. It, it could be loaded up with, um, you know, with with other services as well. That that might um, begin to affect how Shootsbury folks um, 
you know, connect to the World Wide Web. Um, I, it's hard to know, uh, or we can only guess at this time what might happen, but it's, um, you know, there's, um, <laughs> I'm reminded of the old folklore story about uh, a, a wolf in sheep's clothing. This is stuff coming in through the back door. It's gonna go up and we don't know quite what the future consequences are, which is one of the reasons why I was, you know, I think um, we need to, um, we need to sort of be careful about about um, uh, all of the discussion that we just had about debt and lowering the rates and everything else, because th this is something that's sort of on the horizon, and we just don't we just don't know where it's going to move or where it's going to go. And um, so, uh, but but it's an entry point. It's an entry point for all kinds of services that could that could happen and, and companies that could come in. Personally, I, I I really doubt in the short term whether Verizon. Or, or, um, or any of the big players are gonna come in and start um, offering cell services and high-speed data and God knows what else. Um, uh, but this is, um, uh, this is a 700 megahertz um, service that's coming off of this tower, uh, which, is, uh, which comes from the, uh, the UHF TV band, the FCC, I, I don't know if anybody know, you know, is aware of this, but the yeah. FCC carved it all, you know, like carved up the a UHF band and gave a lot of it to services just like this. And so um, 700 megahertz is pretty low frequency and that service uh, will be able to go through walls and everything else. In other words, that's a, it's a pretty, it's a, it's, it's a low enough frequency so that it should be very, very effective. I talked to Walter Tibbetts at, at some point. The, 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 the frequency you're just talking about, that's the feed to the tower, no? Well, that's what the service operates on. Uh, is, is Oh, but, but that's the first responder service. The, it, it, the service to the customer for, for, uh, um, <clears throat> Internet is not going to be that. Oh right? no, no, the, you know that'll be completely different, whatever it turns yeah. out to be. But um, but this is um, it, curiously enough. Um, if you have a anybody here have an iPhone 11, uh, because that will respond to that frequency, and you'll be able to tune in. I guess. Um, um, although I think it's going to be uh, the security service that's going to go out over 700 megahertz will be on a VPN. So I, I, I don't know if that'll be that effective, but they're not going to offer that to customers. Yeah. Right? I, yeah. I, I took a look at this uh, first net thing and boy, it's all about money. Um, the, 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 it, most of the presentation had to do with all this equipment they wanted to sell and to provide mostly to sell. And um, the service itself is, in the seventy to eighty dollar a month range uh, for a small for a small outfit. Anyway, well, Walter Good Walter Tibbetts is not interested. He says the town won't be interested for a number of years to come. But nevertheless, that tower is going in, and there's plenty of place for other things to go off of that tower. So it's just it's just something to sort of watch out of the corner of our eye. Yeah. So I I do have a question about this. Is this an opportunity for us in the future to do some dark fiber leasing? I because would think. So. I would think right. so, and, and I, oh, that's, that's, I'm glad you mentioned that, Gail, because I was thinking, whatever goes in there, we ought to make sure we have a fee structure that we can really uh, you know, get some serious money from whoever is going to be using that tower, um, as opposed to right. what you know, normal people in, you know, everyone else in Shrewsbury is paying for. We, we, really be, we ought to be able to get some serious money for whatever the requirements are, and I don't know what they are right now, because that's, that's really a little bit off in the future. But it's going to be coming yeah, out quickly. We don't want to provide service to them for fifty-two dollars a month. Absolutely not. <laughs> no. I, I'll just oh. add here that I am not concerned about at this point about serious competition from uh, mm -hmm. cell phone, the big cell phone provider mm -hmm. in Newsbury, because in the range of about ten years ago, AT and T came in and build a 198 foot tower in uh, Buffum Road in Pelham. It's within a mile of the Shrewsbury line. I, you know, I, like Sarah Palin, I can almost see it from my house. <laughs> um, we, we, we saw it the day it was built. We were amazed, what is this thing? I happened to meet the property owner in Pelham mm -hmm. when I was out hiking and he said AT&T had come to him. The engineers knew where they wanted to site a tower. Mm -hmm. they, Young ho they built this thing. They AT&T sunk a lot of money into this tower. They had to bring in underground power lines, rebuild a road, a dirt road. 
and then AT&T dropped the ball. They never, they or anybody else has never put an antenna on the tower and it sat there all this time. They brought in under power lines, the transformer has four meter boxes on it. So it's clearly it was set up to take multiple um, uh, uh, service providers up there. Nobody's ever used it. When I was still working in Leverett and there was a, Verizon was considering putting in a cell tower in Leverett and this is before we were anywhere near building our network. I talked to one of the lawyers from Verizon and said, well, you know, you got a tower right there in Pelham. You could, you could go in on that because it would have been quite an excellent service to me. He thanked me. I gave him pictures of it and the, the FCC number on the tower. You know, Verizon, AT&T, uh, Sprint, uh, um, <coughs> none of them have done anything with it. It's sitting right there. AT&T gave up the lease and turned it over to American Tower. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, no, I, I agree. I think there's a there's a tower on Pulpit Hill that I think I think is still in the same boat. It's a spec, as far as I know. There's nothing on it. Um, you know the 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 cell providers they're they're putting all their investment right now in five G, and five G is not coming to Shootsbury. No. Um, so I, I'm not particularly worried either, but I just yeah. always, I'm I'm conservative and I want to be worried just in case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Gail you, you, Gail, you made a good point with uh, we can um, sell dark fiber all the way down to Crown Castle um, uh, to them. Uh, Pro probably not. We, the, the lesson that MBI learned was that these people want to be on their own, on their own hardware. On their own hardware, but they need fiber connection to, um, to Crown Castle. MBI, MBI thought they were going to sell all this bandwidth to, to the, to the, other cable companies and, and whatnot, and, and nobody wants it. All right, but, but when you think about um, our, fire, our dark fiber is going by th their location. Um, Understood. It, it, uh, yeah, right, and, and, and that they'd have to install, they, they'd have to do make ready on poles and run fiber um, from somewhere. I mean, that's a, that's a, that would be, um, to get dark fiber there themselves, it could be a lot of money. But, yeah, but, well, un unless, it's, unless it's Verizon. Right, because they can they can just overbuild on what they already have. They already own the they poles. The you know, they can they can yeah. lash to to the you know the exactly. old the, the old uh, copper stuff. So, I yeah, think that they're they're a real competitor there. Um, uh, yeah, but but they still have to. Um, if there was some other party, I I don't know whether Verizon would uh, maybe Verizon would sell them dark fiber too. I don't know. Yeah. So anyway, let's just um, keep an eye on it. If we hear of any anybody being interested in in this uh, tower, let's make sure that we approach them because um, it could be a, a revenue source. Um, uh, if you know, if if they're let's say that their model is no, no, we always build our own hardware, we always do our own thing, but we say, wait a minute, we can you know save you a lot of money here, and and then that income comes to us instead on a monthly ongoing basis, that would be a better deal. Yeah. So is the, is the first net that's gonna be occupying this tower? Yes. How are they getting to the outside world? Well, that's, that's an unknown. I don't have an answer for that. And I don't think anybody else does either. But remember that, there's a, that this is a lot of government money is behind this and security and, and government security stuff as well. And so the chances of us being able to get in on it and it might be rather slim um, because they may want to go to Crown Castle, just like you've said. Or, or, or my guess is they might um, have hardware to hop to another tower and then another tower. And yeah, do it yeah, all, you know they can microwave it. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I don't know. Um, yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, microwaves definitely. I think that's what they prefer to do because, yeah. again, what MBI learned was that these companies don't want to be depending on some Yahoo internet operation in Shootsbury. <laughs> <laughs> even though we're much better, even though we're more reliable than Verizon and, you know, whatever. But yeah, but microwave right. links are independent of... of um, exactly. Of and if they control everything, then they are responsible when yeah. it goes down and they... Yeah. yeah. yeah so that's, I, prob that's probably what they're going to do. Yeah, so I think it's unlikely we're going to make any money. Um, I'm also not particularly worried yet, but I agree with Gail that we should keep our, our antenna. Yeah, just there. Yeah, well, that's that's why I put you know that's why I brought it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good to hear. Mm -hmm. 
Great. I don't remember if I don't remember if I if we sent this out to the whole list, but you guys know that on January Hills Road, Verizon has never put their copper back up. Yeah, I, I, I saw it wasn't up the last time I looked. Yeah, yeah. That it's, so does that mean it just goes to someone who doesn't have service and they, they haven't bothered? They, there's or been, or they, they figured out how to go, come in from from either end. I don't know, but yeah. but there's a are, there's a stretch there. Are there no them. Verizon customers left? And that's that's a possibility as well. I don't I don't. Therefore, really no complaints, and therefore they don't know their cable is down. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe. Or don't care. They, yeah, they they, clearly they don't care <laughs> yeah anyway that's that's pretty interesting yeah well i, I predict that uh, verizon is going to abandon their copper uh here in shootsbury at uh, some time in 2023 to 2024 as and, soon as they're every, allowed to yeah as soon as they're allowed to because because they've gotten out of it in 27 other towns in massachusetts they have really? told all oh. you know you know, they've told uh, uh, folks who are using copper, you know, sorry, Charlie, but you, you know, you're going to have to come, you have to connect to our fiber system instead. And, um, and now that there is a fiber system in town that, it, that will service everybody, and that's going to be the case in many other towns across Western Massachusetts that, that uh, and, and Verizon hates copper. They're, it, it's a loss. Sure, you know, sure, sure. They lose tons of money on it, and they just can't wait to get out of it. So, um, so you know, I guess so it's... Jim, these 27 towns in Massachusetts where Verizon has abandoned their copper is because they have Fios in those. Yeah, right. Or, right. or, 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 or equivalent, but, but they've been able to, do, uh, to back out of any copper connections whatsoever in 27 towns. And I think that list is growing all the time. Verizon, but there's a, there's a but in that case, But in that case, when they request an, an exemption, they can say, we are providing an alternative that's better. Yeah, yeah okay. there's a difference yeah. between abandoning your copper system and, and abandoning your service to a community. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. That's going to be a harder, a harder yeah, bar there, for them There to may be over. state regulations that require them to provide that to every town to provide the service if they're going to provide it at all. Yeah. I, I don't know, but I, but but are they losing money like crazy? Absolutely, yeah. I'm sure they are. They are the, the maintenance of a copper system is just very expensive. And look what they did not, up. In not a, not if you don't put it back up. <laughs> That's true too. <laughs> but, look, but look what they did in New Hampshire. You know, they sold it all to Fairpoint. You know, and Fairpoint got screwed totally screwed on the deal because it was in such it had been maintained so poorly that they went and turned around and sued Verizon for you know for selling them a pig and a poke. And, um, and and won the suit, as a matter of fact, too. So uh, that just shows you how much Verizon just wants to get out of out of sure. copper completely. And sure. here, here in Shrewsbury as well, I think it would apply. What's our what's our phone take rate right now? I think it, it's still uh, it's still hovering around uh, sixty percent. Sixty percent of our customers. Sixty percent of the eighty-seven percent of residents that right. took service. Mm -hmm. well, that's yeah, a, it was still a fair. That's still a fair number. Who's not taking? Who's not? Uh, some of those are probably. Well, maybe not. I was gonna say some of those people might just not be having any, anything other than cellular. Yeah, yeah that that's the likelihood. Hmm. Yeah. It's not that they're still keeping their Verizon copper line. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of curmudgeons who still are sticking with their copper because, God damn it, well, like, but I, me I for 50 one, years. I, I, I can think of one person. <laughs> <laughs> we all know who that is. Or, yeah. or Mr. Eric Stocker certainly knows who that is. <laughs> oh, okay. Some people don't. It's their only choice. But... <laughs> But what was the figure that Verizon's lawyer gave in the uh, DTC filing that they lost um, what percentage of their uh, customer oh. base to us? Well, uh, yeah. Uh, Did they, they didn't admit that they, they 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 said that they just cited our number. They just yeah, said yeah, they, 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 they just said you know like you took eighty seven percent of our customers and. You know. But they didn't. They didn't really. They just used our number. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Well, that's a badge of honor. 
<laughs> we done good. It, it, it's something it was, I'll, I'll tell you in that um, DTC reply that we did, it was very satisfying to write a line in there along, <laughs> along something like, um, you know, variety, you know, you, you complain about the fact that, you know, we, you know, we're a direct competitor, but that implies that you provide a service that actually is in competition with what we provide. Um, <laughs> something along those lines it was yeah. it was a satisfying sentence to write <laughs> there was, there sure there was. no contest is there yeah. yeah don't forget they could have done this they could have built the network too if they didn't they chose not to oh, yeah. absolutely. absolutely which we pointed out to them yeah and yeah we would well, have good. been thrilled to have your your service and you never yeah never followed through not just that i really miss them. i really miss those verizon checks i have to write every month <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Those are the good old days. Yeah. <laughs> At first, they said we were too small even to do a survey in our town. To do a survey? Yeah, just to do a survey about yeah, yeah. what the needs were. Wow. Yeah. Um, all right. Anything else? Just dinner. Yeah. All right. <laughs> let's go have dinner. Um, okay. Talk to y'all next month. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye. Thanks a lot. Have a good night.